Hello, I am Angie and uh, I wanted to create this video to maybe help some people out with things that I had a lot of questions about until I started getting some answers. And it's about Bell's palsy and synchronesis. And I've seen all the YouTube videos that are out there, which I'm sure you probably have researched a lot of them as well. So um, I'm currently 40 years old and when I was 12 years old, uh, right when my parents divorced actually, I woke up one day and just could not move the left side of my face all the way down here exactly, just like the eyebrow and all the way down. Um, of course, after a couple of months it was or weeks, it was all droopy and I was 12, 13 years old. It was um, difficult, you know, at the time to deal with and I... Uh, ended up uh, not healing. They didn't do some of the things that they try now with some shots or physical therapy or speech therapy. Um, they had given me some exercise that I was kind of so devastated and didn't even want to think about it. Um, so I didn't really do much and I don't know if that's why, but I still have uh, effects of it, which is the synkinesis mainly when uh, as I understand it, the nerves as they grow back might, might not grow back uh, perfectly the way they were before and creating. And plus you have overused it because you can't close your eyes. So you're, you know, you're, you're trying. So, so now it makes that so when the nerve grew, uh, so now even though I can close my eye, this is still going up when I close my eye or blink. So if I'm blinking, this is like twitching here and things like that, or if I raise my eyebrow, this goes up here. And I know, having watched videos, that that's the exact same thing that happens to many other people. Also, in, sometimes when you smile, you have this platysma muscle that tenses here in the neck, and that may or may not be bothersome. So anyway, I just wanted a short um, introduction for you guys. And then what happened, I thought I was just stuck with it forever. And so then I would do some research here and there, Google, look up and see if they come up with anything new. But I assumed that I was just still 50% um, paralyzed on this side and that I would just never, you know, have my smile back, never be able to really smile in a photo or smile while I was talking to people. Um, then I heard about Botox, which... I, you know, when it first came out, we kind of were making fun of who would, you know, do such a thing. And now maybe all of us are doing it to some extent. And, but uh, when they said Botox can be used for to treat it, uh, I, of course, became interested. I think it was maybe 2011 that I tried it the first time. And because I've tried it so many times and spoken with different people, I'm just going to let you know. Uh, some things that happened to me. I'm certainly not a doctor. I'm certainly no expert and I still haven't figured it out, but I'm just going to give you a heads up of some things that um, happened to me and how it worked for me or didn't work for me so you can kind of be aware and maybe compare it because I believe sometimes you got to educate yourself to what you're doing, especially if you're going to see different doctors so they don't start over experimenting on you again. Uh, because I think probably for most people it's a little bit of a learning curve what works for some people it's not going to be the same dosage for example and somebody else because it depends on how bad it is. So anyway I remember the first time that I had it done was by a local doctor in the town where I lived at, at the time a bigger city and that my primary physician recommended me to to go and see. I think maybe it was like an ophthalmologist or something. There's different doctors that provide this could be um, it could be um, uh, like a plastic surgeon. It could be a facial paralysis expert. It could be, um, you know, like an ophthalmologist or um, dentist, maybe in some case. I don't know. There's just different people, and some people are just cosmetologists, but they don't always like to get into the medical part of it unless you know exactly what you need and where and how, um, then they may. So... I don't know if there's any laws governing this or anything, so I'm just sharing my experience. So the first time I had it done, one thing is you can see right now that this eye is tends to uh, shut down. So like if I smile, it, it goes smaller, like it actually closes on me. So that's 
one part of it that, you know, it's nice for attractiveness to have your eyes be kind of equal. And he gave the shots of both talks right on the eyelid, two on the top, two at the bottom, and two units in each spot. Now, don't write these units down because it's not going to apply to you. I'm just sharing my experience. What happened was my turn so big and I couldn't close it. <laughs> so I'm blinking and only this eye is blinking. People think I'm flirting and winking at him. I couldn't close it like if I went swimming, you know, I, it's drying out. I had to get eye drops. It was terrible. So it actually also just looking normal. It was actually, you know, like I said, bigger. So that that was very kind of scary. And I didn't do, I didn't go back for any more for a while. And I, I don't know if it was that he was, Anyway, I'm not even going to go into that. Um, but he had also given me like one shot of three units, like right around here, somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but somewhere around here. And that actually brought my smile up to the point where I could see like one, two, three, four teeth and the little hole here. The smile I was actually really happy with. What happens when you get these? Botox is that it relaxes the muscles so it can open things up, it can reduce the spasm, and certain things that, one reason why you're, this is still pointing down um, is because when you lost the muscles to pull up, the downward muscles was still working fine from the neck, and so they were overactive, and they're still um, overactive, and then there's like some tension here, uh, an unnecessary tension or maybe a shortness of the, I don't know the medical stuff at all like so don't you know quote me or anything you know I'm sure you could laugh at me but so it's it's affecting the the muscles by you know reducing them or reducing the tension or a spasm and so that worked really well for my smile so I had a little bit of information the eye did work for too much and the smile was actually improved so then one time I did uh, go back but I said you know we got to reduce it so they did like one unit on um, two places on top and one on the bottom, and that worked much better. But then they did this, again, same unit, same area, and it, it was a different doctor, by the way. But um, but now that apparently was, uh, traveled, the, the Botox traveled down a little bit, or it was the angle, or it was the spot, but it actually affected the upward muscle in, the, in a bad way where it actually drooped down. So now I had an even worse droop than I had before, which of course is devastating. So I had to stay pretty strong through all this because, you know, you you lived your whole life since you were 12 with not being able to smile and I was getting worse. It's like the last thing you want happening. So that's why I'm doing this to like, you know, don't do it or if you do, be aware of these things. Um, so since then, um, I, I, you know, that I didn't do it again for like two years, and I was just scared to death. And then I decided, you know, to try it again, but to just go really carefully. I, uh, and to make a long story short, this has happened again where this caused this to droop. Um, so it's very careful, you know, to use that. Or the last time now that I went, I only had one unit done. Um, Actually, he did it like more more up here, but I the time before that I did like one unit here and one unit here, and and um, and that worked much better. And the thing with Botox is that it actually changes you over time, so you might not need it as much anymore. So like this, like I said, the, the time before, which you you go every like three months, this helped us month, but then after three months when it wears off, this was still good. So I, uh, so I, that's why we did it up here. So that could be a thing too that you're doing it one way one time. It works great, but next time you got to reevaluate because, it, you know, if it did something too much, then you might not. Once it wears off, you might not need that anymore or not as much, or whatever. Like I said, it gets complicated. And then also, I spoke to an expert who said, don't ever um, inject right at the eyelid, like right were at the opening um, and I found like a, a picture of a person that had dots in different places and and it described the way he described it to me which is under the eyebrow like a unit you know somewhere over here somewhere over here I don't want to be specific because I'm not trying to teach you 
Um, and I am so much more happier with that. For one, I can raise my eyebrows and they're not totally, you know, crooked one up and one down um, like they were. It actually lifts the eyebrow. It, Botox has some kind of lifting effect. Botox does all kinds of things that makes it complicated in itself as well. But it has really opened up this eye um, and and lifted this. And I just had this Botox just a few days ago, so I might not even have the full effect yet. Um, so, yeah, I might not have opened this up as much as the other one, but it also doesn't close to me. Like before, if I would yawn, this eye would completely shut. And you you might have that as well. Um, now, you know, it doesn't do that. Or when I eat, you know, I think about it, I'm not chewing. This eye would like be closing, closing, closing. It's not doing that. So I'm, you know, very thankful for that. And, and like I said, my upper smile, I'm very happy with. Now, some doctors say don't do anything on the side at all. Don't mess with it. Don't touch it. And I'm all for that as well. And what you can do then is just working on the on the side that was not affected by the Bell's palsy. And I do that a little bit as well. Like right now, I'm pretty pleased with my smile. Like I'm okay with this. Uh, before, like I said, you would only see like that much. And now you can see that much, which to me is like huge. I'm ecstatic. But if this one, because when you had the paralysis here, this would be overactive and tend to... Um, give you too bigger of a smile on on this side than what you had before and also your eyebrow on the on the non-affected side might operate more um than it did before and so it's kind of overactive so that of course makes it look even more uh, uneven so we actually put i think it's three units in that in that up pull muscle there so it doesn't go up quite as much so it doesn't have that full effect and also down here on the um on this side I think it was maybe two units and one unit, something like that, to prevent that from, uh, you know, going, you know, so that it's uneven like that. So now it's, uh, you know, more, I can actually kind of control it to be pre pretty even. Um, the platysma muscle, uh, they've done research and where you can actually have it cut, which is supposed to be an easy pr uh, procedure. Um, it can release that tension. But I didn't really find much research on that it actually improved the smile very much. But if you uh, have that condition, like where you're trying to smile, you're trying to, to ring this down maybe, and it's just causing so much uh, tension there that it's counteracting, you, you can put Botox in it or they do procedure where they cut that as well. And insurance may cover that as, as well, as well as the Botox, although it's usually the highest deductible. It's like a specialist visit copay, and you have to pay like you know the highest deductible on the Botox, which is usually ranked as the most expensive medication you, you can have. So for me, that was like sixty dollars plus forty percent of the, you know, it would just end up being hundreds of dollars each time. So I get a total of about ten units right now. I get on this side like three here and three here, or two and two, whatever. Um, and I currently pay $10 per shot. I'm going to a doctor, but he's not a, uh, he's not a, a plastic surgeon or anything like that. And he doesn't do, you know, he wouldn't cut the platysma muscle or anything like that. He just does more Botox for cosmetic. But because I know exactly where I want him, he does it. He just follow, follows that and charges $10. So if I get 10 units, it's $100 every three months. Um, and that is, uh, very doable for, for me and I'm comfortable with that and I didn't have to do this side um, and I could probably just do like these two shots here maybe one unit here to make sure I don't get that droopiness again um, you know that would be $30 and then I like getting these so like I said last time I spent like $100 and like I said next time I might get something slightly different uh, another thing this was kind of a miscommunication and I'm just so thankful that he's worked with me, but uh, he, uh, we ended up doing like two units here, which caused this not to come down uh, as as much as it did before. That has let up now, but that was another problem. Like that was like sitting like this and, and blocking my smile as well. So that was a mistake, and it was a miscommunication. It wasn't his his fault really, but um, but just letting you be aware. So I would maybe not, you know really touch 
that it really depends. I mean, sometimes you're just happy with the eye, eye thing, or if you have that twitching I'm talking about, you know, maybe have one unit there, whatever. You have to, I recommend going to a specialist first so that they can kind of map your face and see what, what they recommend. And then if you become an expert in it, then you can maybe find a more affordable doctor. I know some of them charge like $1,000 just to come and have that initial consultation. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, yeah, so when I learned that, you know, you had this downward full on uh, because you were had that paralyzation and so the downward muscles were working stronger and that's part of why you're having uh, not able to pull up. It's not that you can't, that the muscle is not there. It's just that the downward process muscle is stronger. So with that in mind, if you can think about that, so when I smile, if I concentrate on moving this more than I'm moving this, then I can counteract that over overreactivity that happens on the stronger side. So then I can kind of bring my smile kind of neutral. And then if I also am mindful of that my eye closes when I smile, then I can, you know, kind of have that in mind, maybe like lift my eyebrow a little bit and, you know, help counteract that. And then if I think about that, those downward muscles are strong, in your mind you can control your muscles a little bit. So then you can, you know, kind of, you know, concentrate on using the upward muscles more than the downward, because if you don't concentrate, the downward muscles will work stronger and bring that that side down. I hope this uh, was not overwhelming or anything. I hope it was helpful. I hope maybe you can take some of that and like, oh, oh, okay, you know, maybe learn about the Botox procedures for the first time or just um, uh, learn from my mistakes that, that I did many, but, you know, I stuck through because I figured if I could just figure this out, then I can have what I have today, which is my, I mean, I had just prayed God, you know, you've done so much in my life. You've you've saved me. You've you know healed me. You've brought me to have a husband and the family I always wanted. You know, everything is wonderful. But what are you going to do about my smile? You know, kind of challenging him. And then just within weeks later, I found out about that this is available. And I like that it's only lasts for about three months and so you have to go and do it again because that way if something doesn't turn out the way you want it. You live with it for three months and then uh, you get back to basically what you, where you were and can just try it again. So um, I wish I had maybe some pictures to show you what I looked like before. Um, but, you know, I would always erase those pictures. I'm sure you can relate to that as well. But like I said, it's this would be really big. And this would be, you know, like like that. So it was just plus this eye would be smaller. I mean, it's it's just it affects your beauty uh, in a in a negative way. You know, I mean, there's there's no way to say that gently. But I am I am ha I'm so you know happy now. Like I could care less uh, that I have it because now I, f I feel it's manageable and I'm happy with the results. So. Good luck with everything. I live in Georgia, south of Atlanta, um, but I don't have any one in particular to recommend unless you live right here. Maybe you can contact me, but uh, otherwise you, there's there's tons of people more than you would ever know that are performing this in, in your area. Now, in order for you to find somebody who's going to do a $10 a shot might be a big challenge. But like I said, start with going to a doctor, and then once you know exactly where and how much, maybe you'll be able to get uh, someone who's not an MD to do it uh, at a more negoti negotiated price directly with them. So good luck. Um, I love you guys. Uh, you're all beautiful. And um, if this is something you can afford, um, I believe you. it's worth a try. That's my opinion. Take care. God bless. Bye.